any gods enough to stand against the power of one epic Norse god? Apparently not. At least not in terms of what we saw unfold in the pages of DC vs Marvel. DC vs Marvel came out at a time when the comics industry was struggling. To encourage sales, the two biggest comic book publishing competitors of DC and Marvel decided to team up and let their characters duke it out in the pages of this comic. This collaborative project allowed us to see characters like Thor and Shazam, or as he was known then, Captain Marvel, face one another and also of course see who comes out on top between them. When it came to this pairing, it turned out that Thor was ultimately the victor between the two once the secret of Billy's transformation into Captain Marvel was revealed. Sorry Billy. What are some gods that you would like to see Thor face? Let me know down in the comments. And do you think he'd win? I don't know. Let us know. Thor and Hulk is like a mashup for the ages. We've seen these two go toe to toe more times than I can honestly count. And while I'd say that most of the time I've actually seen Hulk win between these two, this isn't always the case. In fact, in Thor Ragnarok, the only reason that Hulk even wins that fight is because the Grandmaster interferes and shocks Thor into submission after he discovers he can tap into his lightning powers even without Mjolnir in hand. In the comics, Thor has beaten Hulk not by channeling his inherent powers himself, but actually through the use of Mjolnir. With one swift hit from the hammer, Thor was able to knock out Hulk and claim victory. At least, you know, that one time. At one point, Thor is manipulated into working for the Fuhrer, the leader of Germany during World War II. He is an amazing asset, obviously, for Germany to have on their side, clearly, and ends up proving himself so when he goes up against the invaders in Invaders issue number 33. At the behest of the Fuhrer, he is sent out to take out Joseph Stalin, but ends up instead handily knocking out Union Jack, who was disguised as Stalin at the time, prepared to be eliminated, I imagine, if need be, in his place. All for, you know, world peace, I guess. All for the side of the allies. Fortunately, it is in this battle that Thor realizes the villainous nature of the man he is working for and ends up being able to use Mjolnir to withdraw the damage he has done and bring Union Jack back to life. Thank goodness. I'm so glad that Thor realized he was on the evil side of that war. Union Jack in this iteration is Brian Fallsworth. Brian was serving back in World War II and started out as a spy working alongside his friend Roger Aubrey before he inevitably ended up as a superhero working as a member of the Invaders hero team. He is a super soldier, though not as strong or as experienced, I would say, as Captain America. He doesn't get to live nearly as long as Cap does either. He's got a much shorter time in the comics. Deadpool used to love dressing up as Thor, but while people say imitation is the best form of flattery, let's keep in mind that that's a Midgardian saying and not an Asgardian one. I don't even know Asgardian sayings or idioms. Eternal life is like an apple, is that one of them? That should be one of them because it's kind of true. So of course, when Thor came across Deadpool impersonating him, he was not too pleased. And look, Deadpool is a pretty gifted fighter and also has that healing factor on lock, but he's not nearly as powerful as Thor is, let's be honest. Not by a long shot. So of course, no one was surprised when Thor made quick work of Deadpool with his hammer Mjolnir. Namor is more of an anti-hero than a full-on superhero, I will grant you that. But I doubt we're going to be doing any top 10 times Thor humbled anti-heroes lists anytime soon, so I'm just going to seize the opportunity to focus on the hero part of anti-hero and feature Namor here. Namor and Thor have fought on a few different occasions, and of those fights that I'm aware of, it was a pretty brief and painful experience for Namor. Namor is usually known for being an underappreciated heavy hitter in the comics. He's the first official mutant to appear over at Marvel Comics, and he's surprisingly strong. Not only that, but he also rules an entire underwater kingdom, so yeah, like I said, a pretty powerful guy, but none of that is enough to protect protect him from Thor's wrath or his fists. Despite many more well-known and often considered to be more powerful characters out there struggling to face Thor, Wonder Man is actually a character who has fared pretty well. Despite not being as well-loved as some of the others on this list, or as iconic, I would say. Now don't get me wrong, I love Simon, and despite his often lackluster costumes, I do think he deserves more love in the comics. So here we are. Wonder Man was often known for having fists that were actually stronger than Thor's hammers. It was basically a saying people said about Wonder Man, and for a while this was even proven to be true when the two actually came to blows. But what happened? Clearly he can't have all 
always fared well in a fight against Thor if he's on this list, right? Well, Thor eventually used the spinning of his hammer to collect all the energy that Simon was throwing his way and used it to charge up his own hits, swinging right back at Wonder Man with everything he had thrown at Thor, which was how Thor was able to get even and beat Simon in the end. Even though it might seem insane, Thor actually was powerful enough to defeat the sentry. It's true. Or, I mean, at least kind of. Really, Thor went up against the sentry's alter ego, the Void, whom Norman Osborn was trying to use for his own means during the siege of Asgard in the Dark Rain days. During, literally, siege. Well, Void was a villain who once scared pretty much all of the heroes based in New York City, which let's be real, for Marvel is honestly a lot of them. Here Thor took on alone and even managed to defeat both the Void and Sentry. Though granted this was at Bob's behest, so kind of having I think a little bit of the Sentry's help, at least mentally, to overwhelm the Void. You see, Sentry saw what was happening and he didn't want to be used in this way, so he basically begged Thor to put him out of his misery here and end him. Still, the fact that Thor was able to fight back against the Sentry's dark alter ego, who has been established as being immensely powerful, and was able to seemingly end the Sentry by throwing him into the sun, at least for a time, was pretty impressive. This was less humbling and more of Thor ending his friend in the name of mercy, but at the end of the day, it's an impressive victory, so I felt compelled to share it with you here. I have mixed feelings about this humbling moment, but it did happen and I do want to have at least one lady on this list. And these two together are often paired up as being iconic since they both boast of lightning powers. So here we go. We are talking about Storm, a leader of the X-Men and at one time Queen of Wakanda. We all love Storm here and I'm honestly sure Thor would never even think to fight against her normally, but in this instance he was forced to do so during the 1999 contest of champions. Storm seems to be outmatched when it comes to their power sets at first. We have to consider this was also the late 90s before Storm had realized her full potential and was established as a true and official goddess. Thor ends up having her on the ropes here when Storm manages to get up close. It's honestly not a bad tactic considering that I feel like Mjolnir can pack more of a punch at range and Thor's powers can be even more accurate and deadly in terms of targeting her alone if we got some distance. However, in the end, it isn't Thor's hammer or his fist or powers that defeat her, but instead a much more surprising move, honestly, that disarms her, a kiss. I gotta say, I wasn't expecting that. Thor used the kiss to literally take Storm's breath away, causing her to faint and granting him the W. You might be surprised to hear that Thor is powerful enough to dance with even the wielder of the power cosmic and come out on top. That is exactly what happened when Thor faced off against Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer at the time is soaring through the cosmos when of course he runs into Thor. From there he decides to attack Thor, who at that moment was was fighting against Beta Ray Bill. Now if you're wondering what the heck, why are these two fighting, when for the most part these two are actually often known to be allies, it had to do with Thor's mental state at that time. He was in the midst of being manipulated basically, he was basically suffering from warrior madness. Bill even attempts to join in on the fight against Thor with Silver Surfer again, but in the end Thor calls on extra power from his own imagined Valkyrie who represents, like I said, his own warrior's madness. And and uses said power to best Silver Surfer, even doing enough damage to completely knock him out. In fact, Silver Surfer may have been doomed if it wasn't for the interference of Adam Warlock here. When Adam Warlock first crossed paths with Thor, he was much less experienced. He had basically just been born and he thought that Lady Sif would make a good mate for him. His mistake, obviously. Thor disagreed. While Adam Warlock is usually known for being one of the most powerful entities in all of Marvel Comics, at the beginning he simply just didn't have the experience or know-how to take on a seasoned and powerful warrior like Thor. So right off the bat, Thor made quick work of him when he attempted to put the moves on Lady Sif. Not only that, but later on, when Warlock faces Thor again, when he is down with the warrior madness, having come to the rescue of Silver Surfer, he and Norin both get beat so badly that they are forced to retreat. That's about it. I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Until next time, you stay nerdy YouTube.